Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chansom. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Monday, the 27th of April. Indian Prime Minister interacts with Chief Ministers on COVID-19 situation, Lords joined efforts. Taliban accuses Afghan government for impeding peace efforts. And Nepal extends COVID-19 lockdown till May 7, cases reach 52. And now for all the details. With India entering final week of its second phase of nationwide coronavirus lockdown, Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Monday reviewed the situation across the country while interacting with chief ministers in a video conference. Prime Minister Modi also sought suggestions from the ministers on further extending the lockdown based on the current situation in their respective provinces. As India on Monday entered final week of its second phase of nationwide lockdown, Prime Minister Narendra Modi interacted with chief ministers of several provinces via video conference and discussed the situation in their respective provinces. Prime Minister Modi during the meeting lauded the ministers for their efforts in the collective fight against coronavirus pandemic and told them that a policy needs to be drawn to exit the lockdown. Most provincial governments favoured continuation of strict lockdown measures in the red zones. Some provinces confirmed they will continue the lockdown with relaxation in economic activities. The lockdown samapt hone ka unho ne shabd istimal nahi kiya. Kuch rajyo ne clearly ye kaha ki ye rail travel or air travel nahi hona chahi, Gujarat khas karke. India on Monday confirmed 27,892 coronavirus cases, out of which 20,835 COVID-19 cases across the country are active, while 6,184 people have been cured. So far, 872 people have lost their lives due to the deadly virus. With the spike in COVID-19 cases, majority of the Indian provinces are expected to extend the ongoing lockdown, which is due to end on May 3rd. Three terrorists were neutralized by security forces in an encounter in Kulgam district of India's Jammu and Kashmir on Monday. The encounter comes after two terrorists were gunned down in a similar encounter in Pulwama district over the weekend. Security forces neutralized three terrorists during an encounter in Kulgam district of the Union Territory of India's Jammu and Kashmir on Monday. Based on specific inputs, a surge operation was launched in Lower Munda area in Kulgam during which the terrorists opened fire on a joint team of army, police and paramilitary forces. The terrorists were reportedly gunned down in retaliatory fire. Surge operations were still underway in the area till the last reports came in. The encounter comes after two terrorists and one of their associates were killed in a similar encounter in Pulwama district of Jammu and Kashmir on Saturday. The Kashmir Valley is currently under a shutdown after Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi ordered a nationwide lockdown till May 3rd to prevent the spread of the coronavirus. Moving on to news from Pakistan. Fears over health and restrictions on movement have forced many Pakistanis to observe the holy fasting month of Ramadan in a subdued fashion. Celebrations to break the fast each day are now restricted to homes with only immediate family members. Coronavirus infection fears and a lockdown have forced many Pakistanis to observe the holy fasting month of Ramadan in a subdued fashion. The food traditions of breaking fast are the same as before, but at Samin Zara Abasi's house, it's only her immediate family that gathered on Saturday for iftar, the meal eaten after a day-long fast. The 20-year-old college student who has been homebound since mid-March when her college closed said that in the past there would be many gatherings but it has all changed. 
پہلے تھا کہ گیٹ ٹوگیدر بھی ہو جاتی تھی کزنس وغیرہ بھی اکٹھے ہو کے افطاری کر لیتے تھے پروگرام بنا کے ہم باہر بھی چلے جاتے تھے لیکن اس دفعہ تو اس طرح کا کوئی سین نظر نہیں آ رہا کیونکہ کافی زیادہ حالات ہیں تو جتنا بندہ کیئر کرے گھر میں رہے اتنا ہی بہتر ہے The usually bustling city of Karachi was relatively deserted, leaving the locals who were out and about gathering supplies to wonder how this all happened. Queues outside food shops that are still open were long and the few vendors on the streets saw brisk business. क्या हो गया ये हमारे शहर को इसकी रौनक है कहाँ चली गई सब तबाह बर्बाद हुआ पड़ा हुआ है इफ्तार के जगह जगह दस्तरखान लगे हुए होते थे वो कुछ नजर नहीं आ रहे भाई लाखों लोग रोडों पर रोजा खोलते थे कि यार हम गरीब आदमी हैं हमारे घर में मतलब नहीं है कि हम इफ्तारी करवा सकें हम ये रोडों पर खड़े होकर खोल लेते हैं यहाँ बहुत अच्छा हो जाता वो कुछ भी रौनक है नहीं है More than 90% of Pakistan's more than 200 million people practice Islam and most of them fast during the holy month. The country has over 13,300 confirmed cases of COVID-19 infections. In news from Afghanistan, amid a prolonged delay in intra-Afghan negotiations, the Taliban has accused the Afghan government of creating hurdles in the way of peace process. saying the U.S. and NATO have also fallen short in implementing the peace agreement signed in February. The Taliban has accused the Afghan government of creating hurdles in the way of the peace process, saying the U.S. and NATO have also fallen short in implementing the peace agreement, the group signed with the United States in February. The Taliban in a statement on Sunday said the interests of the Afghan government are in the continuation of the war, and claimed the government started creating hurdles for the implementation of the peace agreement from the beginning. Responding to the group presidential spokesman Sadiq Sadiqi said, the government accepted the call for a reduction in violence to start the peace talks, as well as started the Taliban prisoner release, and formed a negotiation team to move the peace process forward. The remarks by the Taliban came in response to international community, including U.S. Peace Envoy Zalmay Khalilzad, for a humanitarian ceasefire and a reduction in violence during the ongoing holy month of Ramadan. Last week, Afghan President Ashraf Ghani also appealed to the Taliban for a ceasefire, citing the special conditions of the countrywide spread of the coronavirus. However, according to the Interior Ministry, the Taliban instead has intensified attacks across the country. Afghan food vendor Mazia Sikandar is dressed head to toe in a personal protective suit. Instead of dishing out burgers like she used to, Sikandar is now providing hand washing services, spraying people with disinfectant and handing out face masks to residents in capital Kabul. Afghan food vendor Mazia Sikandar is dressed head to toe in a personal protective suit. as she drives a food cart down the street in capital Kabul. But instead of dishing out burgers like she used to, now she is providing hand washing services, spraying people with disinfectant and handing out face masks. These solar powered carts from Banu Kitchen, meaning Ladies Kitchen in Dari, have been converted into disinfection vehicles in a bid to stop the spread of the coronavirus in Kabul by boosting public hygiene. Sikandar operates one of the carts with her husband Muhammad Anwar. The government provided the funds to convert the food carts into these mobile disinfectant vehicles. There are now 40 carts traveling throughout the city run by 80 women and men at the forefront of fighting COVID-19. Even when the coronavirus pandemic comes to an end, Banu's Kitchen will convert these carts back into food carts. Um, most of the population d- cannot afford uh, the sanitizing products which, are, which have uh, you know, higher prices. So what's, well, our mission is to reach to these underprivileged, underprivileged families, to these impoverished families who cannot, who cannot afford uh, to buy sanitizing products. So we reach to them. Afghanistan reported a total of 1,531 cases of the coronavirus with 51 deaths on Monday. The number of recovered cases in the country is 212. Moving on. Nepal has extended the nationwide lockdown by 10 days to May 7 
as coronavirus cases continue to rise in the Himalayan nation. The decision was taken during a meeting of Council of Ministers on Sunday evening as the number of COVID-19 infections reached 52. The Nepal government has extended the nationwide lockdown till May 7 to prevent the spread of coronavirus in the country. Nepal's Council of Ministers meeting on Sunday evening decided to extend the ongoing lockdown by 10 days amid rising cases in the Himalayan nation that could risk the spread of COVID-19 pandemic. The decision was taken as the number of COVID-19 infections reached 52 by Sunday afternoon after three new cases were reported. So far, 16 patients have recovered and the fatality number is zero. This is the fourth time the government has extended the lockdown which was imposed on March 24 after the second case of COVID-19 was reported. The last time it was extended till April 27. Border crossing points will remain closed and international flights will also remain suspended till May 13. Meanwhile, a group of Chinese tourists on Sunday demonstrated in front of the Nepal Tourism Board demanding repatriation flights to China amid ongoing nationwide lockdown. The Chinese tourists held placards with slogans such as release outbound commercial flights and Chinese tourists still stranded. Other diplomatic missions in Nepal including USA, UK, Germany managed chartered flights to airlift their nationals amid the lockdown prompted by increasing COVID-19 cases. Bangladesh National Zoo has been disinfected by the zoo authorities as part of the government's various measures to contain the outbreak of COVID-19. Authorities in several countries have disinfected zoos after a tiger in New York City tested positive for the respiratory disease caused by the novel coronavirus earlier this month. As part of the Bangladeshi government's various measures to contain the outbreak of COVID-19, staff of the Bangladesh National Zoo recently sprayed disinfectant at the zoo. Located in the Mirpur section of the capital city, Dhaka, the zoo is home to more than 2,000 animals from 165 species. Authorities in several countries have been disinfecting zoos after a tiger at the Bronx Zoo in New York City tested positive for the respiratory disease caused by the novel coronavirus earlier this month. Bangladesh reported more than 300 new COVID-19 cases over the weekend, bringing the total number of cases in the country to 5,416 and 145 deaths. Meanwhile, due to the coronavirus outbreak this year, the Bangladeshi capital is under lockdown and the streets are deserted and mosques are closed even for the special Ramadan prayers. The holy month of Ramadan began over the weekend in Bangladesh. The month-long lockdown was due to end on April 25 but has since been extended to May. Coronavirus lockdown has led to clearer skies and lower pollution levels so much that the Pir Panjal mountain range is now visible from Srinagar city of India's Jammu and Kashmir. The Pir Panjal mountain range is now visible from Srinagar city in India's northern Jammu and Kashmir after the coronavirus lockdown has led to lower pollution levels and clearer skies. The mountain range part of the inner Himalayan region is located nearly 124 miles from Srinagar and often cannot be seen because of the dust in the air left by heavy traffic and smoke emanating from factories nearby. However, with limited movement and human activity during the lockdown, the Pir Panjal range is visible, while Srinagar residents said the landmark Dal Lake in the city also has clearer waters. India is in lockdown until May 3rd to prevent the spread of the deadly coronavirus which has killed over 800 people in the country and affected more than 27,000 people. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash AsiaNewsline and follow us on Twitter at AsiaNewsline. 
That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.